and the United States, he said, they would either ferment a revolution in that country or they would kill that particular leader. He said, why did I do it? He said, I knew it was wrong. He said, why did I do it? He said, because of three things. He said, the money, the power, and the sex. He said, that's why I did it. And as soon as he got attached to those things, then he was used. As soon as he got attached to those material things, then he allowed himself to do things that he knew was wrong. But guess what happened? He went through a transformation. And what began to happen was, he, his moral conscience began to take over. Because each one of us has a moral conscience. Every one of us has a moral conscience. You can call it my conscience. You can call it the self-accusing spirit. You can call it that voice inside you. Every one of us has that. When we start feeling guilty, well, the more attached we become to material things, the more we begin to blot out that conscience, the more we begin to block out that moral self. Well, this guy here, he went years blocking out that moral self, making a whole bunch of money, a whole bunch of money, having a whole bunch of power and having a whole bunch of pretty women on his arm. And he went with it. But as soon as he became, as soon as he started becoming detached, as soon as he be started becoming detached from those things, from those material things, as soon as he stopped loving them, as soon as he, as he stopped looking at them basically as being his God, then his moral self began to take over. His ethical self began to take over. And he said, this is wrong. And he said, I don't want the money anymore. I don't want the power. I don't want the pretty women on my arm anymore. He came to his senses, but he had to admit they were able to get me. They got him because he was attached to it. He was in love with it. They're trying to get you to become in love and attached to material things, to everything material. They're trying to get you to look at material things and material acquisition as being the most important behavior that you can do, the most important goal that you can have. And as soon as you do it, you'll lose your mind. You'll lose your ethics. You'll lose your morals. You may gain some stuff though. You may get some stuff. You may get a lot of stuff. Because the people who encourage you to do it, they have a lot of stuff to give you. A lot of stuff to give you. Really, they do. What do you want? That's what they do to our leaders. What do you want? You want a house on the beach? We got a whole bunch of houses on the beach. You want, what you want, a Range Rover? We make Range Rovers. Come on, what do you want? And they try to see what is your attachment? What are you attached to? Well, guess what? Your bosses will do the same thing. What are you attached to? They're going to try to find out. How much credit card debt are you in? How locked in are you in? Because the more locked in you are, then the more control that we have over you. That's why they're throwing so much loans at you right now to get you in debt. So when you come out of this institution, you're in debt. What do we say in Islam? Debt is a four letter word. Debt is a form of slavery in Islam. It is slavery. And so when we get caught up in this, brothers and sisters, we get caught up in this lifestyle, this mentality, say goodbye to your soul, but your soul doesn't have to be gone forever. So you have to make sure that you develop a strategy of how to deal with it. In the movie, The Matrix, you remember that at the end of the movie, remember when the bullets came at him and he stopped him? Yeah, y'all remember that, right? And the bullets came and he said, no. Nah. And the bullets stopped, right? And he picked up a bullet, huh, interesting. What that represented was that he had gotten to the point where he was able to control that material world. He was able to control it. He gained mastery over it. And then when you saw his eyesight and he looked at the system, he saw it as all numbers, he saw the system as it really was. He went beyond the facade. He went beyond the curtain. Why? Because he had gotten to a certain level of what? What was he, what did Lawrence, what did, what did Lawrence Fishburne tell him, his character? Who was he, Morpheus? He said, in order to control this thing, you have to suspend your disbelief, your fear, and your doubt. That's what he said. In order to control this, in order to master it, you have to suspend your disbelief. What's the opposite of disbelief? Belief. You have to suspend your doubt. What's the opposite of doubt? Certainty. We would say Yaqeen, wouldn't we? Certainty. And he said you have to suspend your fear. That means you have to be courageous. So that means you have to, be, you have, to have belief. You have, to, you have to be certain that that belief is true and you have to be courageous. And once you get to that point, you will master this fake world. The same thing applies to this American matrix right here. 
that you can master it. You don't have to be a common, ordinary American who falls for okie doke after okie doke after okie doke because it was on TV, right? Or because it was, it was on the news or because it was in the newspapers. You know, Americans have a certain reputation in the world. Americans are like known for being like, you know, like a slight bit arrogant, you know, and not too bright. No, seriously. No, Americans like the view is that Americans around the world, people around the world view Americans as people who fall, they'll fall for anything. You know what I'm saying? Like one minute the TV will say one thing and then and they'll believe it. The next minute the TV will say one thing and they'll believe it. Like remember there was a time where Saddam was good, Saddam Hussein, Saddam is good, Saddam is good, Saddam is good. And Americans said, Saddam is good. And then all of a sudden the media said, Saddam is bad, Saddam is bad. And Americans said, Saddam is bad. Right? Well, Americans have that kind of reputation. You know, they'll go for the okie doke, right? But see, the reason why they're falling for the okie doke, one, is because they're tired, right? And two, is because they're, 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 the lifestyle that they've adopted is not a, a lifestyle that's conducive to thinking. Because when, when, you, when you're living a lifestyle, when all you're doing is paying bills, and that's all you're doing is paying bills, and getting in more and more debt, and it's becoming harder and harder to live, that occupies your time. It occupies your mind. When you don't have health care, that really occupies your mind a little bit. So when you have the people struggling for basics, for the basic things in life, then what it does, it robs them of time to think, to wonder, to organize, to really change, to really, you know, see, see things differently. Guess what you have to do? You have to change your lifestyle. You have to change your lifestyle. This is how you'll be able to master it. You don't have to live a life of American where, Americans where you're just paying bills all the time. You don't have to live a life where you're just living for a mortgage, where you're paying $4,000, $5,000 a month for a mortgage? For a mortgage? You don't have to do that. You don't have to live a lifestyle where you are up to your neck in credit card debt. You don't have to do that. But the American people who are stuck in that matrix think that this is the only lifestyle that they can live. There's no other alternative when there is one. But there, it requires sacrifices to be made. See, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, what you'll have to go through in your life, what you're going through in your life right now, you're making sacrifices. You're making sacrifices right now. And check this out. As students, you can't be a student, really, be a student, and be really attached to material things because you guys are like the temporary poor. You're the temporary poor, you know what I'm saying? But look at that, look at the frame of mind that you're in though. Delayed gratification. Y'all could be out doing your thing right now and focus on money. You decided, no, I want to go to school. Delayed gratification. This is the point where you start building your a different lifestyle right now. You start building that different lifestyle, that building, that, that, that different mentality. Because guess what? What they're going to want you to do is go into that corporate world. And you know, that corporate world is so unhealthy. I mean unhealthy. Physically it's unhealthy. Mentally and spiritually it's unhealthy. You will go in that corporate world, it's all about dog eat dog. It's all about cutthroat. The people who get the promotions, it's not because of their merit. It's because of who they know, who they slept with, who they're related to. It's, 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 it's not based on principles. It's not based on morals. The corporate world is a dirty, filthy type of culture that will, that will, that will rob you blind. No time for your families. Matter of fact, you better not put the family over the corporation. The corporation comes first. Right? And you will live that lifestyle and not realize it until it's too late that that is a lifestyle that is dangerous. You don't have to do that. You don't have to. There's an alternative. And so when we talk about Islamic Awareness Week, one of the reasons why there's so many people who do not want you to listen to the Muslims or what Islam is about, because an alternative type of thinking that Islam gives you. It's an alternative type of thinking that has you questioning things. It's an alternative type of thinking that has you looking beneath the surface, not just on the surface. On the surface is just a materialistic type of thinking. Someone who's, someone who's dominated by materialist thought will only look on the surface. So this person is a nice person because he has a lot of stuff. We have a lot of problems with that in the hood. So many of our people are struggling. So many of our people are, are poor that a lot of times when you see someone with material things that means that translates to them that that's a good person only because what they have on the outside well, when you live in a materialistic society that's what happens a person can have something on the outside and you would think that's a good person